let me take a few minutes to show you the Micro 800 simulator that comes standard with the Connected Components Workbench software. It doesn't matter if you're using the, the standard edition or the developer edition of CCW, the Micro 800 simulator is included in both. There is a difference though. If you're using the free standard edition, which again is the free unlicensed version, the Micro 800 simulator will only run for 10 minutes. After, at the end of 10 minutes, basically, if you re-download or, or kind of stop the controller and restart the controller, then you'll get another 10 minutes. If you're using the paid version, which is the developer edition, then the Micro 800 simulator will run for 24 hours continuously. Now, uh, before we actually create a project, I just want to show you the simulator itself. So to actually open it up, we're going to go to Tools. And we're going to say Micro 800 Simulator. And that's going to open up a separate program, which is a, basically the Micro 800 Simulator. Um, so it looks like a Micro 850 because it's basically, it's based on the Micro 850 controller. Now, um, if you're kind of looking for anything to kind of help you about the Micro 800 Simulator, under Help, you can come to View Help, and it will open up a um, kind of a help file in your browser. So, you know, a lot of times people ask if there's a manual, something, right? Uh, this is basically the, the best place to go. So uh, all the help features are here. Talks a little bit more about uh, its use cases, the difference between the real controller and the simulator. Kind of tells you what the simulator can and cannot do versus a real controller. For instance, we can't do serial communications we can't do Modbus communications through it, right? So it's going to be certain things here that we just, uh, that we can't do. Um, it also talks a little bit about the differences between the standard and uh, developer edition as far as the timing goes, like I just mentioned earlier. And it also talks about how you can go about uh, configuring the simulator and resetting stuff like that. All right, so um, before I, come back before we start to configure this let me first create a project in ccw so we're going to create a project that is for the simulator so we're going to go a uh, new project and it's okay we're going to call it project one doesn't matter the default project here is fine and we're going to say create um and under our add devices we want to go to controllers and then we need to go to the micro 850 and then we need to choose the LC50. The L50E is the newer generation of the uh, Micro 850 controllers, the E for enhanced ethernet. The LC50 is the kind of previous generation, um, but the simulator itself lives underneath the LC50. So we want to find this 2080-LC50 48QWB-SIM. That is the simulator. And there is no choice here other than version 12. So we're going to leave it at version 12 and we're going to say select. And once we select it, we can say add the project. So this now builds the, uh, the controller project in CCW, which we will get that uh, pop up here in just a moment. So while that happens um, in this and this, uh, you know, for the simulator itself, uh, there's a few things we can do here. Um, we, you know, first there's a power button on, power on button. We don't want to push this yet. We want to make sure that we make any configuration changes to the simulator before we power it on. The other thing is the the uh, the IP address. So right now it defaults to the loopback IP address, which is the 127.0.0.1. We can leave it as that. If you need to change it for some reason, you can choose the various uh, differences here. Um, but we don't have a lot to choose from, so we're going to stick with the 127.001. The other thing I could do is um, I do have five plugin modules, and I have the ability to also add the expansion I.O. So the 850 line gives you expansion I.O. as well as the plugins. So if I wanted to add a plugin to this uh, simulated controller, 
I can right click on one of these plugin modules, say analog or digital, and I'm going to choose uh, for this, I'm going to go ahead and choose an analog. So I'm going to put the IF2 here. And in the second plugin, I think I'll add the analog output, which is the OF2. But I can, I can add any of the, of the Allen Bradley um, branded plugin modules to this, to this simulator. And then if I wanted to go ahead and add one to the expansion, I can right click in this space over here and I can add either the analog expansion modules or the digital expansion modules to to kind of add those to our simulation. I'm going to go ahead and add the 16 point input card uh, into this just to uh, have that there as well. It's very important that we make these changes now because once we turn on the simulator, we will not be able to make any edits. If we need to make an edit to this, we'd have to stop the simulator, restart the simulator, and then make the edits before we power it on. The other thing that's, uh, I want to show that's also of interest here is that we have this uh, icon for configure I.O. wiring. So if I click on this, um, what this does is it allows me to tie a particular output back into an input. So I can kind of make a virtual wire that would say, okay, here's my outputs from the simulator. Let's go ahead and rewire that back into one of the inputs on the simulator. Um, it, again, references virtual wire. So for instance, I can say add. So in this case, uh, when, when output zero, zero, which is this guy right here, when it turns on, it'd be a virtual connection to input zero, zero. Okay. And you can add a delay in here. Um, at right now it, it's a zero millisecond delay, which is, which is good. We can also do the same thing with analogs. So the key is the analogs can only be kind of wired between the plugins. So I could have this output feeding back into this input type of thing. Um, so we can go ahead and try that. Uh, so in this case, AO00 will wire back into uh, the analog input. All right. This is totally optional, not anything that you have to do. Uh, but if you want to create some virtual connections between outputs to kind of drive back into inputs for simulation purposes, then you can use this uh, virtual wiring, basically. So now we have all this configured. I'm going to go ahead and start the simulator by powering it on. We see now that we get the power on light turns green. All right, so everything's good. Now, back at our, back in our CCW project. Now it's very important that we match our project to what we just configured in the simulator. Um, so once we come into the uh, kind of the, the Micro 850 tab here, we have the options to add our plugin modules. Now we don't need to really do anything else to the configuration of this virtual simulated controller. We don't need to put an IP address. We don't need to tie the IP address to the 127.001. We don't have to do that here. Um, what we need to do is we need to add the plugin modules that we added to the simulator because the simulator and the controller project have to match in that respect. So I'm going to come to the plugin modules. I'll right click and analog. And we had an IF2 in that first um, plugin spot. Uh, we can leave this as current and then right click on the second slot analog OF2 for the output. And then the last thing is on our expansion modules down here, right click, and I'm going to do a digital to IQ 16. So that matches what we did in the, um, in the simulator, right? So, so at this point we can go ahead and download. I'm going to do one thing though. I want to make at least one program just to show the virtual wiring concept. So I'm going to add a ladder diagram and I'm going to create a, a simple rung that will basically, when I, when I press, uh, when I simulate the, one of the, when I turn on one of the expansion IO um, points, it'll turn on that first output, which of course will in turn drive a virtual wire connection to the, to the input. So I'm going to put a, uh, a contact here, a coil, 
and then I'm going to say that if I use the IOXDI00 and we will turn on the D, the embedded DO00. All right, so just a real simple run there. Again, if I come back to my global variables, which I did not show you yet, uh, here are all my embedded I.O. points. The EMDI are the embedded discrete inputs. The EMDO are the embedded discrete outputs. And then my P1 and P2 are my plugins, plugin one, plugin two. And my I.O. X1 is my expansion uh, card one, X1. And they are, that, that expansion card is a digital input, so that's why it's a DI. So analog in, analog out, and then digital in for expansion cards. All right, so now we're ready to connect finally. All right, so we have our, our virtual sim our simulators up, and it's running. Very important that it's running, and we have an IP address set to it. When I come back here to my uh, CCW, I don't have a connection path to find yet, so I can say connect. So in my connection browser, I'm going to go to the ETH-1, which is uh, the Ethernet. And I see here I got a 127.0.0.1, and it's the Micro850 uh, controller. You notice here I have a red X on this Micrologix 1100, so it's not currently connected, but my simulator is. So I'm going to highlight that guy and say OK. This will now make a connection to the simulator, and it's going to start to pop up a few things here. One is, uh, do you, since there's nothing in the simulator versus what's in my controller project here, it says, hey, do you want to download? I want to go ahead and say yes. Once it downloads, it'll uh, then it'll say, hey, do you want to do the, the current project download? Once again, another thing to, to click. And then one more thing after that is, the download is complete. Do you want to change the controller to the remote run? And we're going to say yes. And I get a pop-up here that will bas that's basically says, you know, it's going to run for one day. If you're running the free standard edition, it'll say 10 minutes. So I am connected to controller. You can see that the background turned yellow and it says I'm connected. If I open up the simulator again, you'll see now that we have the run. We have the run light uh, green. So to just show the, the virtual wiring uh, connection here, uh, I again, if I had a, a simple rung here that when I turned on this first uh, input on this expansion card, it's going to turn on this output. And when this output, you see when I put my mouse there, it shows that, that orange kind of virtual wire. So when I click this, it turned on the output and it, it drove you know, back into the input here. So I'm able to basically simulate, you know, kind of an output, turn on an input uh, through the virtual wiring, which is pretty, pretty neat to uh, be able to simulate some things. Now, if I come back to my variable list, I just want to show you that um, if I come down here to the plugin modules in the simulator, I can basically type in an analog value. Now, um, I did have it to where the, this analog output was driving back into this analog input. So for the, I'm going to go with the, the, sec, the, the, the second analog input, which is 0, 1. And if I just type in a number here, like 15,000, we will see that 15,000 shows up here in my controller tag. And let me change that 25,000. You can see that it changes 25,000. So I can just type in a value to, uh, to go right into my controller program to, to simulate. Um, or if it, for this analog output, uh, if I go ahead and type in a value here, say it's uh, 10,000. So now 10,000 shows up here, but it also went into the analog input because I'm, I'm driving uh, that analog input is going right back into this analog. I mean, sorry, this analog output is going right back into this analog input, right? So if I were to change this number to 30 
or 20,000. We'll see that 20,000 now comes back into here. So, so again, virtual wire connection. So an analog output can uh, feed back into a, an analog input for, for simulation purposes. Or I can just type in a value here uh, in my analog input, bring it into, a, to, to the, uh, into the tag. And if it's an analog output, I can also just type in a value. And that shows up in the tag in the simulator. So, uh, so easy, easy way to, to simulate our, our control. Uh, then all these other inputs up top, I can just basically toggle them on one by one just by clicking on them. They turn orange when they're on. You can see that in the little light. Uh, simulated light turns on as if it was an actual uh, real controller. Same thing with my expansion I.O. Of course, my expansion I.O., I do not get lights over here. This is just for the embedded I.O., but I can basically turn these on. And if you go and look in our, um, we look at our, back here in our controller tags, we can see that there's a, a blue checkbox for DI01. And now it's off. DI02 on, off. All right. So that's how we can interface the simulator into your program.